How are we doing guys? So finally, it's taken me long enough to get this video out. But as you probably all know by now, I've been in the process of moving, plus going on holiday, and finally getting things sorted out when we did get back from holiday because it was all up in the air. But the video is now here. This is the Mark 7 review video that I promised everybody quite a while ago now. Next will be the phase video, but that's, <laughs> that's for another time. So a lot has changed since I originally did my first video on these turntables. Um, as you'll all remember, I wasn't particularly impressed with a lot of things on the original version that I reviewed a couple of years ago. So I had the 1210s originally, 1210 Mark 7s, I bought two individual units, nothing but problems. Pitch control had a dead spot on both ends of the pitch, so from 7 to 8 on both scale ends of the pitch control. It was completely dead and nothing happened. Panasonic turned around and basically told me that you know there were issues originally with them and that they were looking into it and then the next thing you know I get an email from them saying there's nothing wrong with them that's how they've been designed and if you want to be able to have the extended pitch that you're missing on there basically switch over to double the pitch that's what they told me um, so they sell you something you can't use the ends of the scale of the pitch for and it annoyed a lot of people and unfortunately I bought bear a bit of a brunt of this because uh, people that were watching this that had bought Technics that didn't know nothing about that problem had suddenly started getting in contact with Panasonic and then started to get in contact with me after I found the problem and the first question they asked me is did you ever get the issue resolved and the simple answer was no because what happened is when they released the Red Bull versions guys the Red Bull versions didn't have the problem with the pitch and what do you reckon happened after that? The newer versions of the 1210 version of the Mark 7 and the 1200 in silver version um, all had out of nowhere all of the issues resolved that I explained about before. So one minute there's, there's problems and we're looking into it. Next thing you know, oh there's nothing wrong from that's how they design. If you want the pitch, extra pitch range, push the butt, double up button for the pitch. Um, and that was it. And the next thing you know, they work. Now I bought these turntables originally. So the because people keep asking me questions, you know, what's happened with these turntables since the apparent issues have been resolved? Because what happened was people were contacting me after watching my videos and saying, Jay, there's nothing wrong with the pitch on them. What are you talking about? There's no dead spots. And I didn't believe them at first. I was like, okay, then we'll prove it. Send me out a video. And they did. And yeah, there wasn't a problem. There wasn't a problem with the pitch. And the problem had been resolved. It was absolutely mental. So after everything that happened, they finally pulled their finger out and sorted the issue and didn't tell anybody. So you've now got people out there that have got dead spots on the pitch control, really wobbly, nasty uh, strobe dots. Like I said before, you've got the washing machine effect between left and right for wow and flutter, but you've got up, up and down movement as well, um, which is what the main problem with the other turntables had. So you've got some people that have the nasty washing machine issue on their strobe dots. Mine haven't got that. Mine are nice and steady. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. And the pitch issue's been resolved as well. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think they're all right. I haven't really got a major problem with these anymore. So you've got people out there with the issues who probably only got one turntable, maybe they've got two turntables, didn't know nothing about it, and there's nothing they can do about this now. And hopefully, if they contact Panasonic, they might be able to do some sort of uplift for them. But I highly doubt it. It's been a very long time now. Um, but yeah, anyone that's in that doesn't really know what they're looking at for this, the most common question I'm asked for, asked about now with the Mark 7s is, how do I know if what I'm buying doesn't already have the issue? So it's really easy. Speak to your speak to a rel accredited retailer. Don't buy it from some back end DJ shop you've never heard of before just because they've got them in stock. Buy them from a well known DJ store. So your best bet when it comes to anything to do with Technics in the DJ world is to speak to West End DJ. Now West End DJ are pretty much the main UK distribution hub for Panasonic. So they will have all the answers for you. Now they sell these. Like, like, well, they say fly off the shelves, these do. They do now, they fix the issues as well. Thousands of these units have been sold. West End DJ will be the people to speak to. So they'll be able to tell you probably when the stocks came in and if their particular stock has the issue. But the, the hindsight now is anything over the last couple of years, the problems that have happened have pretty much fizzled out now. So in any way you really are going to be buying a set that have the issues that I talked about before. So if you buy them secondhand from somebody and don't actually ask them when they bought them, 
buy something without any proof of purchase, so there's no data to prove when they've bought them. You don't check the dates on the back of the turntables. You don't do your due diligence with the serial numbers. So really, I would be going anything from the Red Bull version onwards, you are going to be absolutely fine. So these were purchased from me earlier this year, as we all know. These particular versions have no issues. So the 1200 Mark 7 issue, if you're in the UK and you want a pair of the 1200 edition like I had here, which is not like me, usually everything I go for is black. I Obviously 1210s, black, right? I thought, go for something a bit different. Because I remember when I had the GRs sitting here, which they did go straight back, and I'm sick to death of talking about GRs, but when the GRs were here, the paint quality and the overall finish of the GR version in silver was a million times better than the version in black. So out to my very, very good friend and customer, Andrew Huggy Bear Peters, for loaning me his individual 1210 GR to do the original review against the belt drive. But again, when you reviewed that against the the GR in silver, the paint was better, the graphics looked better. It was just a much nicer premium finished turntable. So I thought we'd take a punt and do exactly the same thing with the Mark 7. And again, I mean, this is a lot better. The graphics look better. The overall finish of everything on these is a million times better. Now, there were problems straight out of the box because it wouldn't be a, you know, it wouldn't be one of my normal videos if I didn't tell you about the problems. So a lot of people would say you should have sent these back, but it didn't, again, it really didn't bother me too much. And these are things that I can sort if not, right? First thing I noticed was the height differences between the arms. Now I've got Relu, a Relu Concorde on one of these and I've got a Autofon Pro S on the other. Now they're exactly the same. There's no difference between these carts. Basically what happened was Autofon brought out their Mark II version, turned around to Henley Audio and just all reloop and turned around and said, rebrand them, call them whatever you want, just don't call them the same thing. That's what's happened. So the black version, the Concord Black, for those of you that are in the know about the reloops, they are exactly the same as the Autofon Pro S in black. They're made in the same factory. They're exactly the same unit. Just rebranded. Same thing goes for the other units as well. So if you get a really good deal on the old reloops, snap them up, especially if they're for home use, regardless of what version they are. But they are exactly the same units of the old versions with the snappable lever lifts. Hence why they stopped making them and Autofond decided to bring out the Mark IIs where you can remove the actual lift itself. That's the only range of reason why they've done it. Okay, but either way, there was a height difference. So I'm gonna put my finger underneath the stylus of this one. I think you can probably still do this on this one here. This one, you go straight underneath. There's a slight difference in height on that. Now, it was slightly kinked. These were box fresh, brand new and sealed. Now, if these were Mark IIs up to Mark Vs, these would have been straight back in the box, straight back to the retailer, and I probably would have just been getting replaced, but saw a refund, to be totally honest. That was the first issue, but they play perfectly. They're not bent. The bearings are spot on, and they're only being used at home. I managed to kink it back down up to a little bit of jiggery-pokery, so it's a lot better than it was originally. Second issue I found straight out of the box with these, the height adjusters. Now, if you look at the back here, obviously you've got the locking section here for the back of the arm. If I unlock this, you can see here how far this moves down. So if I lock this all the way in, see how far that's locked? Go over to the second unit. I'll move this all the way out, all the way in. That's as far as it can go. Right, so look at the difference. It's a big difference there between the amount of, mate, you've got to move it to lock them. So what I, again, this would bother a lot of people, doesn't really bother me that much either. These are only for home use. But the other thing was the actual, the stiffness of the rings themselves. This one was extremely tough, as you can see. I'm trying to fight to get that one to move. I only really have these set at zero anyway. This one, unlock it, move it, much easier. Still firm, but much easier to move. Now, again, why didn't you send them back, Jay? Time's been and gone with it now. I'm not bothered. They get set at zero, usually at the highest point, about one and a half, depending on what carts I'm using. Um, and it skate stays at zero. The arms play perfectly. The audio quality is absolutely fine. It is what it is. You know, if you bought an individual turntable and you had different height arms on one of them, what are you going to say if you bought them second hand? It's the same bloody thing. But I'm not bothered. As long as you're happy when you buy them, it really doesn't matter. And it's literally a hair's difference on that. I'm just very OCD. The main thing is the locks, really. But again, if you set them and you set them looking like this, and you never adjust them. They don't move. They stay still. 
Job done. The pitch controls were the big issue before on these. So if I turn the turn the pitch off on this, these the actual um, the torque settings are on their higher setting and the brake settings are on the higher settings as well. So obviously we were at zero now, as you can see. If I move it down to three point three, which is halfway between the three and the four. So as I've explained to many people before in the past, if you line up each line with the top and the bottom end of the plastic cap, that middle line is your final readout. So that is 3.3% or plus 3.3. Minus 3.3, roughly around there. Yep. Then you've got plus 6.4. And 6.4, again, is between 6 and 7. Line going through the middle, final readout, 6.4. And there we go. So, the main question is that people are asking me about the pitch, saying about has the dead spot been resolved. I can confirm 100% now. If I move it out to 7, like so, and then move it, you can now see, you can hear me doing this, you know I'm not joking around and lying about this, that there is physical movement with the strobe dot at the top when moving between seven and eight. If I do it slowly, you can still see it moving as well. So they've resolved the issue. If I go to the minor scale, it's gonna be a little bit harder to see this probably because it's going the other way. If I move it faster here, you might just be able to see it if you look at the bottom. Yeah, you can see that. So again, the range has been resolved. The, the actual slider itself doesn't feel as rough now as what the original ones did when I, um, did the 1210 version of the Mark 7 review a couple of years ago. The very first one I did was just bloody terrible. It was, it, you get to a certain point, it was extremely rough. This still feels a little bit on the firm side, but it is smoother. One thing to bear in mind about these as well is you do not have any shader cloths on these turntables. God knows what I didn't include them with them. I think it's just laziness on part of, of Technics really. It takes all of two seconds to fit them. Remove the plastic um, knob off the top of the pitch, stick your, fade, your felt cloth on it and put that back on. You'll be able to firm that up and it'll feel a hell of a lot better. That's going to be the next thing I'm going to be doing with these. But again, with the amount of use that these, uh, these have accumulated since I've bought them, I'm not really that fussed. But the pitch has been resolved. It's actually pretty easy mixing between plus and minus eight and also when you double up the pitch as well. Now, usually with any turntables with digitally controlled pitch, I find it very hard mixing on these full stop with any little movement because you find the little movements you make do nothing. We've gone through this a million times before, but it's either too much or too little. And before you know it, you're overshooting the amount you want and it's too fast. So you keep trying to compensate for it. When you're using this with the double, the double of speed, so you're going at 16% pitch, those little movements you make, they tend to stay locked. Now, a lot of people with the older Mark 7s, the ones that have the issues with the pitch control, stated to me quite a lot it's quite a few people have done this to me saying that they had it at 16 and they found it easier to lock their mixes now i can confirm a hundred percent here that that was the case when i first bought this i was straight out of the box put it on 16 and i was mixing absolutely fine they were very rarely going out if they did you touch the record touch the platter but Getting adjusted to the plus and minus 8% pitch on this didn't take very long. And I can confidently say now that mixing on these is nowhere near as difficult as it was originally with the, um, the earlier model. So that issue now is gone. People want to be using these at home now, wanting to buy something box fresh and brand new, hoping to buy something that they can take out the box and use straight away. This really is the only option that you actually have now in comparison to, say, the GR, which I wouldn't touch with a barge pole. Uh, again, the GR is a hi-fi turntable for the amount of people that keep contacting me saying, oh, what's your problem with the GR? Why don't you like it? Oh, why do you keep slating it? There's nothing wrong with it. Look, I don't need to explain myself with my reasons a million times over. I'm the person that does this for a living and about sounding too, you know, blowing my own trumpet. I do this for a living. I've spoken to so many people within the industry that also agree with me, big people, okay? We all state the same thing. And I've spoken to Panasonic who also advised the same thing as well. It was a hi-fi turntable. It's not in the same uh, ballpark as say, for an example, the Mark II. Yes, the Mark II was originally not 
a DJ based turntable. When they but obviously DJs found out about the pitch control really by mistake about how fantastic and accurate it was using it as the slider. And that's how it matured. DJs loved that. Panasonic or Technics found out about this and then grew the brand even more, changed various different features, not much really to shout about internals, but it did the job, right? The GR's a hi-fi deck. The Mark 7 is their DJ turntable. That's it. There's no which one's better. The, the GR is a very premium turntable. It's heavy. It weighs a ton. It really does. It's a good quality unit, just not good for mixing. And I'm sick to death of having to explain over and over and over again why my thoughts are on this. The Mark 7 is a good unit. Yes, it weighs nothing. But again, if you're using it at home, which is what the majority of DJs are going to be doing now. Most people that play vinyl only really play at home. If you play on vinyl, you're not going to be taking your own turntables to gigs anymore. You're really not. You're going to be relying on a promoter to bring their own turntables. And if yours really are, if they're that bad, then you've got to start weighing up. Is it really worth taking your turntables to venues? Would you want other people spinning on your decks? If you spent all the money on a pair of these, would you really want to trust other people's grubby mitts, lifting up, lifting them up and down on the arms and, you know, disrespecting your cartridge and stylus, you know, slamming the arm around it's just, I don't do that. I'd never do that. Not now, not in this day and age. Trust nobody, right? Trust nobody. So is it really worth it? For home use, these are great. I've recorded many mixes on there. If you go onto Mixcloud, there's a, there's a very long trance mix that I actually recorded when I first bought these on the day that I bought them. Not one mix on that, not one single blend goes train wreck, out of time or anything. And at the end of this video, I might, I might do this as a separate video actually, there's another video that's going to be uploaded at the same time as this, which is going to be a couple of trance records. Hopefully it doesn't get picked up by the... Um, by the YouTube gurus who, you know, move your records every five seconds. But there's going to be a video up about five, six minutes long, I'm hoping, that's going to be a couple of my two very first records that I ever bought, uh, two trance records that I haven't played since I was about 15. Uh, so they're going to be mixed in. Nothing special, no fanciness with the mixer or anything, just both channel faders open, mixing the A and B sides of both records. Not done it in years, just to demonstrate the accuracy of these pitch controls and how long they stay in time for. And you'll get an overall judgment really of where they should be and what you've got to do. So you'll find that these are a bit more hands-on. So for those of you that are on the fence thinking at the end of this video, thinking, well, you know, Jay says you can mix on them, but a lot of people do take my judgment into account, which I appreciate, but you need to bear in mind before you shell out £800 per deck that they are more hands-on. So those little movements you make, yes, you can mix on these. I'm not saying you can't, but you will be pinching the spindle, just touching the platter. You can't get away with just brushing the platter on these. Can't stress that enough. Unless you've got these in the lowest torque sec talks, um, settings, you can ask when you're really going to be touching the platter. But realistically, you're going to have to stab and quickly swipe the platter. Anything other than that, it's going to start throwing you off. It really is. You can pitch ride on these as well. It's absolutely fine to pitch ride, and there's going to be a few bits on the video that I upload that you'll see me doing that as well. You'll see me pinching the spindle, touching the platter, and riding the pitch. Um, once they're in, they tend to stay for quite a long time, but then on the odd occasion, you might have to start touching the record or touch the spin, uh, touch the platter. So it is what it is, guys. It's Panasonic. you got to give them their due, really. I mean, this is a turntable. It's a brand itself. Stop making in 2010. They've re-released something for DJs. They could have quite easily just gone, do you know what? We're not going to bother. They could have even gone digital. Part of me wishes that they did. To be honest, they should have released a controller or they should have at least released the CD, like a CDJ or a USB style controller, an all in one or an individual unit. I think they should bring out something like this. If they got the money to afford to bring out a unit like this with a flimsy pop up, I mean, that is, look at that look. For flimsy pop up, why couldn't they just gone, do you know what? We'll take the fundamentals of this turntable, we'll slap a screen on it with a USB, with an encoder and we'll do it as a, a actual standalone media player. They should have brought one out, 12 inch in size, just like this with a screen at the back. Maybe did, an, did like a hybrid that plays records and plays digital. You know, like the SLDZ of the, of the future, basically. They should have done that. They're kind of st standing in their test of time with it. They've, brought, they've kept it stagnant. They haven't really changed anything 
in terms of the design side of it. I personally really like these. I know obviously in my original reviews I didn't, I don't like the originals. I've got my many problems with them that I've already stated. But this, this I do like. For home use it's going to be a lot of fun. I've already, I've already had them for a while now. Pulled off many good mixes on them. And I can't see them going anywhere anytime soon. In fact I was looking at adding a third one. <laughs> so I've got no issues hence why this is also up for sale now if anyone if anyone fancies a Rain 70 that was bought what in April brand new um, please contact me but either way yep Mark, Technics Mark 7s how many marks out of 10 would I give them well look it's a Technics you can't not knock them I mean you've got to give them a 10 for the fact it's a Technics it's a 1200 guys i got to do that um, the fact it's got digital pitch control, digitally controlled pitch, everything's turning into this now. It's got an analog slider that's digitally controlled. Every turntable on the planet's got that. It has any modern turntables exactly the same. Do I think it's a good idea? No. Have they done well to get around the fact that the little movements of every other turntable is a real pain in the backside and ensure that you can mix? They've now solved the issue. Yes, they have. So you've got a turntable that, yes, it's expensive. Yes, it says Technics. Yes, it has a working pitch control now. Yes, you can mix on this. The things that let this down, like I said, is quality control. Some of these units in general, like I said, about the arm assembly, the lock at the back, um, you know, the height being really loose on one and not, not as loose on the other, things like that, not so great. Pop-up lamp is horrible, but again, it's down. If you want to use it, pop it up. I don't really see the big issue with this anymore. I didn't, but I did before. It's because obviously when you look at components such as the original 1200s and 1210s, physical switch, physical spring underneath, same as what this has got, but an individual unit. But it's more things to go wrong. There are more components to go wrong, things to fail over time. This is simply a push toggle switch up and down. It's easy. Yes, it feels terrible, but it is what it is. It is what it is. You've got hidden features in here, so you can do reverse. Um, you've got 78 mode on here as well. You can adjust the, 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 adjust the brake settings, the torque settings. You can change the LED colors from red to blue. Obviously, mine is set to blue on both of these decks now. This looks a hell of a lot nicer, in my opinion, and suits it better. It's basically what the GRs look like. Um, but yeah, overall, the fact that you've got an arm assembly, which... If you take the gimbal section out of the way with the bearings, everything else is exactly the same. Different brushed finish on the arm, but this is the same tube. Same everything as what you'd have on a standard 1200 Mark II up to M5G or Mark VI. Obviously, you can unscrew the entire assembly and pop one of these arm assemblies directly onto a Mark II up to an M5G. That does go straight on without the base and the base of the deck. You can pop that on. Um, you know, these other things that bear in mind people don't realise... But the only things that really do let her down other than that would be power cable. You need to upgrade the power cable. Get yourself a good quality IEC cable. You'll notice a big difference in terms of the audio improvement and um, any static noise and interference. That's a big thing. They only include basic cables. It doesn't matter how much you pay for your equipment. It's always worth spending money on the power cables and also the audio cables. They really did... <laughs> it didn't ring the bell when it comes to audio cables, guys. I mean, these are the only two cables in the back of the mixer, as well as the grounds, obviously. I mean, they're not great. <laughs> they're really not great. They are just cheap, cheerful cables. But it's always, again, because they're plug and play, they're removable cables, as well as the power cables. These are all things that can be removed. First thing I would do, to, I say to anybody that buys a pair of these, to recoup a bit of money. If you spend all of your money on these and you can't afford anything else and you've got a cheap mixer and you really are pushing it out to buy anything else, you're waiting a while before you start buying the upgrades for them, such as new carts and stylus. Um, obvious things that you can upgrade. Well, dust covers aren't on mine, are they? I use deck savers. So get rid of your dust covers. The minute you take them out of the box, put them back in once your decks have been taken out. Grab some pictures of them, sell them on eBay. Somebody will snap them up. If they're brand new in their box, keep them in the box. The minute you sell them, slam them out. Keep them in the box, take them out of the box when you sell them. But you'll make easily, individually, the, the dust covers brand new are 100, 110 pound each. So you'll e you're gonna easily get 150 quid second hand for a pair of them if you want a quick sale. The other thing as well, head shells. So the Mark 7 GR has the actual Technics graphics imprinted on top. And obviously they're brand new. And if you don't use cartridges that actually physically go onto a head shell, you're not going to need them either. 
Obviously, I've kept mine for the time being because I've got the sockets at the back so you can put them in them. But again, not cheap. Sell them. Another ridiculous thing as well, which you're all going to laugh at. You'll notice I've got my Roswell Alien slip mats on here. The original slip mats are here. Slip sheets, very, very thin slip mats. They're silly money, silly, silly expensive. Another thing that you just, um, it's not worth it. If I'd have known this beforehand, I would just kept them in the wrap, kept them in the box, put my slip mat straight on top and not even worried with them. Plus without the slip sheet for mixing, it's gonna be a lot easier. And to be fair, even scratching, I find that they're that little bit better. I just prefer the tactile feeling, having a normal thick slip mat. So yeah, it's another way of making a little bit more money if you really are brassic after buying a brand new pair of Technics. Would I buy a pair of these again if someone put these in front of me? Well, I'm not going to use anything else other than Technics. I mean, Den and the VL12s are fantastic. They stopped making them, discontinued. Can't go out and buy a pair of them now, unfortunately. These really are the only option that you have. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's a lot of money. It's a hell of a lot of money. But you got yourself a brand new pair of Technics. You get that experience of unboxing an iconic turntable. Yes, it might not be the Mark IIs of old, but it's very, very, very good. Well, it's good, it's good fun. It's good fun unboxing brand new gear. Especially, you know, you're going to get the bit, going to beat the feeling of unboxing a brand new pair of Technics. But trust me, you're never going to beat the unboxing a pair of originals. <laughs> I've done that. It's amazing. Trust me, guys. Yeah. Well, that's my take on the Mark Sevens. Again, this is probably the God knows how many times I've revisited these uh, these turntables now, but these are mine in my little home room that I've got here. Um, yeah, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. You can mix on them fine, and that's exactly why they're staying. Like I say, overall, end result, in conclusion, you have to be more hands-on with them. Pitch control is accurate, but you may find it will drift after short periods of time. You just need to keep on it. Sound quality is absolutely fine. There's no issues with it whatsoever. But points to take into note before I go and finish this video. Change the audio cables. Change the better quality audio cables and power cables. Grounding cables doesn't really matter too much because they're just the grounding cables are grounding cable. But I'll just change all of them. Get high quality. Spend the money on them. Sell your dust covers. They're only going to get broken and scratched. You're going to have stickers on them. And it's going to be another thing that could have made you money. That's going to be sitting there, scratched looking terrible, feeling sorry for itself. It doesn't actually stop the turntables from getting dusty either. Deck savers, 100%. Buy yourself deck savers. Save the money by selling the dust, selling your original dust covers. Sell the head shells. Sell your slip mats. Make them yours. If you make them yours, you're not going to sell them anytime soon. And too many people will turn around and say to you how bad they are. And everyone jumps on the same bandwagon with them. But I think they're really good quality for what they are. For home use, they're going to be absolutely fine. Yes, they weigh next to nothing. But it's a turntable, guys. A Technics turntable made, you know, we're in 2022 now. We're not in 2010. We're not in 1979 when the Mark II was released. We're 2022. It's a very, very long time after they were released. This is the end result. And it's either going to go one way or the other. And so far, so good. Any questions, everybody? Uh, pop your comments below. I'll put this video online now. And uh, yeah, I'll try and reply to everyone as soon as I can. But any more questions, please do let me know. And I'll try and reply as soon as, I, as soon as I can with it. Repeated that twice. God knows why. <laughs> the phase review video will be next. I do promise you all that. It's been sitting here now the last couple of weeks. But as I've already stated, I'd, uh, we've been moved not, not very long ago now. So once everything's all set up, because the deck stands now, now in the room, which is fantastic. There's only a little, little space. It's awesome. But once this is all finished and done and dusted, I'll start getting cracking. There we go, everybody. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, I'll speak to you all soon.